Hey y'all, hi, it's time for another New Makeup Hot Takes, the video in which I talk about what's new to the makeup market, some of the things that are new to the makeup market, kind of by way of just talking about trends, about aesthetics in general, about consumerism. I'm often looking for a reason not to buy something, even if it's compelling, and sometimes examining my desire to buy something and asking whether that's something that might be good to review on my channel. But I'm pretty picky about what I discuss. It's not like a full comprehensive review of absolutely everything that's new. I kind of just talk about the things about which I have something to say, because you know, a lot of it same old, same old. And then there are a lot of things about which I don't really have anything to say. Like I just only want to talk about something if I feel like I can contribute to the conversation. So just a handful of things today. Hopefully it'll still be interesting. If you like this and you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And now let's get into the meat of the video. New makeup, hot takes, new makeup, hot takes. So I'm going off of trend mood one. And the first thing that came up that is begging me to talk about it is the exact kind of thing I like to see when I'm scrolling, looking for something that I feel is distinctive, is distinctive, distinctive, not distinctive, is distinctive enough to merit me talking about it in new makeup hot takes. It's hard to do something new. And I'm not necessarily saying this is like a new concept. It's not necessarily a new concept, but it's refreshing in so many ways. And it's also very beautiful. I'm talking about the new Danessa Myricks release, which is the Groundwork Palette Blooming Romance. I guess it's the Groundwork Palette in Blooming Romance. Has she had other Groundwork Palettes before and I just missed it or don't remember? Or maybe this is the first one? It seems like this is a version of the Groundwork Palette called Blooming Romance. Anyway, get a load of this. The Groundwork Palette is a multi-use talc-free palette with velvety pomades and coordinating oil-absorbing shaping powders that easily define eyes, brows, cheeks, and lips. So not only is it very beautiful, a bunch of shades of like rosy neutrals going from rich and quite pigmented looking to some that are very pale. Gosh, the more I look at it, the more I kind of want it, especially because of the word pomades. It's containing pomades over here. I love a pomade for anything because I feel like pomade implies waxiness and waxiness is a quality that I really love in cosmetics or beauty products in general, actually, but especially things that go on the face. I appreciate a wax. I appreciate the power of a wax. And yeah, the shades are just really pretty. But here's the thing. Eyes, brows, cheeks, and lips. So to me, that is, I mean, those are, that's a lot of different places on the face. Those are a lot of different categories of product. And this is like one simple palette to rule them all. This is going way beyond just a marketing gimmick of saying, oh, this stick product that looks like a cream blush also works on your lips. So it's multi-use. Or this thing that is clearly a lip gloss. You can also put it all over your cheeks and eyes. So it's multi-use. I, I mean, so many things are marketed this way, but I feel in this case that it's going beyond that trend, I guess, or gimmick and really just removing the veil from all of our eyes in terms of what makeup is. So makeup is just pigment and medium mixed together. So, you know, colorful powders or colorful creams, pomades, the firmament of beauty shopping, like the makeup market and the beauty market is divided into all these categories and each product is marketed in such a way that I feel like we have started to think of a brow product as like an organic thing unto itself, like an element. And then lipstick is its own category. We like to categorize things. We like to have black and white thinking and things think that things belong just only where they belong. But really all of it is just like pigmented cream pigmented powder. And maybe some of those pigmented creams are formulated in such a way as to make them a little bit more ideal for lips, say, than cheeks. But there are a lot of lip products that another brand would categorize as a cheek product. Just the same exact formula, the same exact medium, the same exact polymers or whatever, you know. And there are a lot of cheek products that a different brand might put it in a tube and call it a lip gloss. It's all just colored creams and marketing and packaging, right? And Danessa Myricks is like telling us that and leaning into it and basically saying, well, since that's true, let me curate a pomade formula and a powder formula and colors in those that are particularly suited for use in all of these different places and put them all together in a palette that looks very beautiful. I mean, it satisfies both the kind of artistic, make the artist in me, the part of me that wants to put my finger in a bunch of different paint pots. And that's why I love makeup 
makeup satisfies that part of me and it also satisfies kind of the makeup collector, not like make, building a huge collection, but the part of me that loves a piece of makeup for its own sake because of its inherent beauty. It satisfies both of those. Danessa Marks is always doing something interesting, but I feel like this, to me specifically, is the most interesting thing she's done in a long time. And again, for her, that's saying a lot. Should I review it? Okay, Sunday... What's happening? Are you yawning in the middle of the day? I am lay tired, though. I'm a bit, I'm a bit tired this week, but we'll get through it. I'm feeling energized, actually, by Danessa Myrick's cool palette. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really into it, and I'm all fired up about makeup all just being art supplies. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Foundation and concealer are the same. Okay, Sunday, I think, is the brand. Oh, it's a UK exclusive, but I can still discuss it. I can still besmirch it. Mmm! Wow, instant karma. I, I think I even have to reapply my lipstick. This, by the way, is actually, this is one of the things on my list to talk about, the new Merit Matte Lipstick and Tibbies. I filmed the swatch video of the century, the lip swatch video of the century. It'll either already be up, it'll be up very soon, of this new release. And I like this shade a lot. It's like a truly spiced peach, like a grungy spiced peach. Okay, the brand I believe is Sunday, and what they are offering here to us is something that looks very much like a food product. Like, it really looks delicious, and like it's meant to be eaten. It looks too much like food. It is confusing me. It is confusing my heart and my brain. I want to eat it. I've determined, after looking at this picture for a long time, that this dripping chocolate sauce, this chocolate syrup, is not involved in the product. Product. That is just the way that they dressed up the bottle for this marketing image. But the whipped cream is, I think, the product. But it's just a little bit too much both. Like you look at it and you're like, wow, that looks delicious. It's not as though it's not classily done. I mean, it's not garbagey. It's just a bridge too far, I feel, in the direction of the theme. Because I would just want to eat it and it would make me feel disappointed every time that I wasn't having a chocolate sundae. I feel as though this is true. What it is is shower foam. But here's the other thing. How many times can you watch? your body. This looks like kind of a small bottle and it's all foaming. It's foaming so it's like I guess air gets foamed into it as you're squeezing it out so maybe a little bit goes longer than you think. Like the, the volume increases as you use it because every time you squirt it out it gets air added into it. So maybe I just see this little can of whipped cream and I see them saying use this to wash your body and I see it saying that it is hot chocolate themed and scented and I just think I'd rather eat it thank you and also how many baths and showers is that little thing really going to last me? That is how I feel. I think what I'm going to do next time at the grocery store is buy some chocolate and eat it. Okay, you know, I'm over here scrolling trend mood thinking, does this merit me discussing it? Does this merit me discussing it? Usually no, no, no. And then I came across this and I was like, yes, because it is new. This is the thing. It's new. So, and it's also just, I have a hot take on this. So Rode, a phone case that holds a lip balm, not just any lip balm, <laughs> this is the trend mood caption with no punctuation. Lip case, phone case that holds a lip balm, not just any lip balm, but the peptide lip treatment. And that's the thing. It holds a lip balm, not just any lip balm, but only the peptide lip treatment. So it is designed to fit only the, <laughs> this thing from Rode that I haven't tried, that I've heard mixed things about, but I still kind of want. It's Here's my hot take. It's just extra. It, and it's not like extra to own it. I kind of, I'm not going to get it, but it really makes me want to have it because this would be so great to have a lip balm all the time connected to my phone, especially if it's a really good peptide lip treatment. Like if the people who like it are the ones who I am to believe. So I could totally understand getting it, right? Or having it. But what I mean by saying it's extra is that it's extra. The brand is being extra. I feel like it's a very extra thing to do to design this and come up with it and have it made. It's a very extra thing to do. And kind of clever. I mean, kind of smart. And it's cool the way that it looks. Like this could have been executed in so many ways. And this way is cool. I want it. Sitting here in this moment, I want it. I'm just like, that goblin is coming up. My makeup, makeup goblin is coming out from under the bridge and is like, <laughs> like, let's go order it. Order it right away. It'll be so great. Like, <laughs> and why? I don't know. I think because it looks aesthetic. I think it's because the it's reviving for me the promise of a really amazing treatment lip tint. It's reminding me about the product and it's making me want to try the product when before I thought I wanted to and then I just skipped over it. It wasn't good timing for me and then I forgot about it. So this is reminding me of it again, which is why this is smart marketing. Because one, one such as I, doing a new makeup hot takes like this, just assessing what's new. I feel like I couldn't not talk about this because again, it's very different. We haven't seen a thing like this before. So I'm talking
talking about it, I'm regenerating interest in myself, I'm regenerating interest in all of you in the product itself, not just the phone case, but the product. That is all working on me and it's making me wanna buy it. But if I just cool my jets, cool my heels a little bit, I will have forgotten it again in 24 hours. I just know that. And so I'm gonna wait on it and hope that happens. It's also just like, every time anyone takes a selfie, a mirror selfie with this, it's advertising for the product. It's just, it is well-conceived. I am telling you, I believe it is well-conceived. Oh, okay, Westman Atelier lipstick. So my friend Stephanie, Beauty Unhyped, I saw this first on her Instagram because she was like, I have to try this and ordered one. I'll link Stephanie down below. She's an exquisite Instagram content creator. I just got a text from a friend who bought my book and it just arrived and he started reading it and sent me a picture of one of the poems. This is like the kind of thing that's happening right now. And it reminds me, to, sorry, I'm like, I have my computer here because, I, I, because I'm old and I can't use my phone for things. I feel like I cannot find my way around the world through my phone. It's like too small. So I have my computer here. And so I just saw the messages popping up in the middle of filming. Y'all, I'm, I should be saying it in every video. And I just am forgetting. I have a hard time remembering and it's a kind of publicity that I'm not used to, kind of publicizing that I'm not used to. And so it's just not coming quite as naturally to me as other things that I have been doing for a long time on this platform. But if you missed the memo, I published a book of poetry. My first book, it won the Anthony Hecht Prize from Wayweiser Press. And the release date is March 12th, which might be just around the corner when you're seeing this. I think that that's what it'll be. I don't think that the release date will have passed yet. But the book is already available for pre-order on Amazon. And it'll ship right away when it's published on March 12th. And I'll link that down below. And I think it's also available on RuPaul's <laughs> bookstore. Like I, saw, I, I follow RuPaul, of course, and I saw this announcement about a new bookstore, a new online bookstore, and I went onto it and searched Julia Hungry and it came up. And it's like, I guess that RuPaul's bookstore is stocking books that are available on the market. So, you know, if you don't want to buy from Amazon, you could buy from there instead or from bookshop.org. I'll link that as well. Available wherever fine books are sold. Anyway, had to take a moment and I'm glad my friend's text reminded me to tell you, to remind you. So Stephanie ordered one of these and I saw it. I saw it in her stories and I was like, dun dun dun, because West Matilia always gets me where I live. And it does look incredibly beautiful. I love this like giant bullet, giant chunky physical object. What am I trying to say? The um the packaging is like this huge thing. And then the little bullet is just normal size. There's something, West Matilia, they just always do it. There's something about that that's really really luxe to me right now, and I love it. However, and this is part of why this is making it into new makeup hot takes. Do you remember last new makeup hot takes when I held forth probably for too long about saturation, and I used the Makeup by Mario lipstick release as an example. I was like, this looks like a beautiful lipstick, but the shades are all so saturated that they would all be so, so, so bright and strong on me. And that sort of is usually an automatic no for, I just can't look further into something if there isn't a shade that's not gonna be like a clown color on me. So on the cover, on the face of things, on the first page, it looks like half of these shades are quite saturated and half of them are a little bit more desaturated. But upon investigation, going through to the swatches on the arms, they just all look really quite saturated. The pinks look very pink. The reds and oranges look very red and orange. And then the ones that looked a little grayer on the first several pages, they just, the brownish mauve looks a little orange. The purplish mauve looks a little bright pink. They just all look super saturated. So I just wanted to point out again, but not hold forth for as long. And maybe it's not as egregious as an example as the Makeup by Mario, but it's just an example of another situation in which I was interested in a product and then saw that all of the shades are just a little bit too close to center for me and then just moved on. The new Merit lipstick, on the other hand, the next thing that's coming up here, one of the reasons I like Merit so much is that they are so good at those desaturated shades, the mixed, the muddy shades. So this is actually a great side-by-side -side comparison because it's about the same number of shades. Is it even exactly? I think actually it's 10 from Westman Atelier. So 10 shades from Westman Atelier in a new lipstick, eight new Merit shades. The shade range looks pretty similar, right? There's like a bright red, orange, brown, and then some mauves and neutrals and a couple of pinks. But most of those Merit shades are just a little bit mucky. They just have a, a drop of muck in them that makes them so much more wearable 
I feel for me, I mean, that's part of my personal interest. I love wearing those kinds of mucky shades, but I also feel it goes beyond that. It makes them more sophisticated as colors in the world right now, period. They're just more interesting colors. Like the pink, even the pink, which I didn't like for me from Merit. Which one what is it called? Sunday. Even this pink Sunday is just a bit more sophisticated than minks from Westman Atelier to me. It's just the color. Like they're the equivalent colors to each other and the color, it just has more dimension. I've said this before and I'll probably say it again, but it's like the Pharaoh and Ball paint version of color as opposed to just regular color. It seems like there are more pigments, more unique pigments, more depths of pigments, more depths of pigment. And I am always referencing in passing my strong feelings about color in this way. And I feel like I always end up being a little bit abstract. I need to pin it down. I feel I need to make a whole video that's like some colors are ugly. They're like, <laughs> and here's why I think that my personal philosophy, my conspiracy, allegedly, I need to do something like that. So forgive me for being less than thorough, less than that thorough today. I don't have anything more to say about the Merit release here because I filmed that whole video. So either go and watch it or stay tuned for it. I did a deep dive on the Merit lipsticks, but it's definitely a new release of note, so I had to include it in the video. Okay, refi mascara with a weird wand. I did a whole refi video. It's not a love-hate relationship. It's like a hits and misses brand for me. And some of their hits, I feel like, have hit it out of the park. I really do put stock in the ability of refi and of the founder, Jess, I believe, to formulate good products, to have good judgment and follow through on some pretty lofty goals with formula. And color, too. Actually, I really like the colors of most of the color cosmetics from Refi. The thing that I keep using, that I keep going back to from that review, is the lip gloss. And I don't usually love, love a lip gloss. I love that Refi lip gloss, especially the shade Sepia. I've worn it so much, and every time I wear it on camera, when I'm editing back the video, I'm like, wow, what was that? And it's always Refi Sepia. Anyway, Refi is great with brows, really great at brows, and lashes are kind of akin to brows. You know, it's a bunch of tiny little soft hairs on your face that you're trying to manipulate to do something super specific. So... I am following the future career of this product with great interest. This is definitely something that I'm curious to try and maybe to review. The wand, though, it's weird. But the images of these sort of long and still wispy lashes, that is what I'm after these days. So I have really taken note of this. Is it out yet? No, it's just revealed. Everything's either available now or revealed. Those are the only two ways that you can be according to trend mood. And this one is hashtag revealed siren, siren, siren emoji. I'm going I'm to start using the siren emoji. That's what I should be doing to publicize my book. Released siren emoji is what I'm going to do. Will you remind me if I forget? Okay, another thing that I had to remember. Had to... Okay, another thing that I had to... Okay, another thing that I had to... <laughs> oh my god. Okay, another thing that I had to mention because I have a long and storied relationship with this brand. Glossier Cloud Paint Bronzers, which is what they should have done from the beginning. I think it's what they did do. So I reviewed the Glossier Bronzers when they first came out, the original bronzers, and they were in slightly different packages that had a doe foot and they had a tiny bit of shimmer in them, which I think was their downfall. I think because they put the shimmer in, that changed the formula enough so that they couldn't say that they were the same as cloud paint. But to me, the cloud paint formula is one of the best on the market, best thing Glossier has ever done. I mean, it's really, really the cream of the cream. And I've always kind of felt that way about those original bronzers. And I like the shades too. I mean, this is a really great bronzer. This pale one, Sail, is a really great bronzer shade for somebody very pale. And they had a similar shade, I think, before. Maybe not quite this pale. So I feel like they just flubbed it a little bit in terms of framing and marketing. They should have done this to begin with, just these straight up bronzer colored cloud paints, which they have now come back and come around and done. And I'm curious. I'm curious to try sale because if it doesn't buff out orange, it could be my perfect blush. I bet these are great. There's just, if it's the cloud paint formula, there's no way that they're not great. I kind of want the middle shade too swept because it's like a gray, it's like a gray brown. I kind of want that as a blush too. Once again, though, I'll probably not buy them and then forget about them. And that'll be great. I love that for me. But sitting here right now looking at them, those are the surface level feelings. And lastly, oh, I wish this hadn't come up last. It's like a demoralizing ending. 
and I'm not going to dwell on it for too long, but it's just this, I feel like I always want to talk about the Pat McGrath palettes because they're so exquisite. My Pat McGrath palettes, my, I have two. They're like my favorite pieces of makeup. They're so luxe. They're so still infused with the excitement of the original first glimpse at Pat McGrath makeup when they first launched in Sephora. I just remember those first four palettes or whatever they were, just going into store and seeing them and being like, this is as good as it gets. Like, this is truly incredible. I, and at that time, it was like, there was no way I could possibly afford to buy one. And I just remember looking at them and being like, maybe someday. And those palettes, those original ones, one had like a really rich bright purple in it. And one had this crazy beetle wing green in it. And they were really artistic, unusual sort of runway related feeling color stories. And the formulas were absolutely off the charts. I mean, it was like true art in the middle of Sephora, you know? So whenever I see one of these posts with the Pat McGrath palette, a taste of that old feeling kind of comes back. It's like I can smell it on the on the wind, you know? And then I clicked on this and I looked at it and it looks like she just re-released a pre-existing mothership in limited edition packaging, which is very beautiful, right? The packaging is incredibly beautiful. And so is the palette. So are the eyeshadows, so are the colors. But it was just once again, this feeling of like Pat McGrath, the most magical makeup ever and the most magical makeup artist ever, which I still kind of feel that way. I still feel that way. And then clicking on it and having that let down of like, oh, oh, it was just new packaging or it's just the same color story as before or something like that. I just, I'm still holding out hope that one of these days I'll have that feeling like a new palette from Pat McGrath and I'll click on it and it will indeed be like a brand new mothership in an extraordinary color story. I still am holding out hope. And so I just wanted to mention my experience seeing this up on trend mood to put it out there that I'm holding out hope so you can kind of like keep the thread alive in the event that that day comes. And now I'm gonna go. I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Makeup Hot Takes. Once again, click through and check out my book, which is about to be released, maybe being released into the world as we speak. And the videos, I'll link the videos in which I talk about the book. And follow me on Instagram if you're not already. That's another thing I should be saying every video, but I always forget. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. I think we got it.